Okay. <clears throat> For the class schedule, uh, we have no classes scheduled at this time. But if you have any class that you would like to request, give us a send us some uh, email or give us a call or whatever to uh, request some training in your district, and we'll see what we can do. Again, we still have all the available online classes out there. Um, the format looks a little different. Randall went over that a little bit last month on the SharePoint and how that changed our our website. We still have Concept Station, Intro to MoDOT Hydrology and Hydraulics, MoDOT Hydrology and Hydraulics, Power Geopack, MicroStation Fundamentals, and Power Geopack Road 1 out there. ORD updates. So we really don't have any updates to speak of. It looks like we're going to try to push after the first of the year sometime with the ORD stuff. We're still working on work sets and uh, our data source a little bit and we still have to test it. So it's going to take a little bit more time on that. Another thing I wanted to bring up before I went any further was uh, um, people with all the new uh, laptops are having issues with that missing preferences for the uh, cross sections when you're in SS10. Um, it, we, Chad sent out an email oh, back on, let me see if I can find it. Chris just sent one out too. But Chad sent one out on, can you see my email, Shannon? Anybody? Okay, they sent one out on October 29th and talked about how you can find this file that needs to be run. Um, so if you had a laptop handed to you uh, and you haven't run cross sections yet, this is your answer for being able to get rid of the missing preferences. Um, you'll just have to have somebody that's an administrator uh, install this file. Okay, so there's some instructions in here and it's back in, Chad sent it out to, I believe, just about everybody in the world. So should have that and Chris has just updated us with another email saying that it's all been updated in the code and scripts so any new laptops after these other ones have been pushed out already will have that update already and you won't have to worry about it so if you do find a missing preferences in your cross sections that's the answer and if you don't remember give us a yell and we'll point you in the right direction okay let's see what else I got here Oh, I have a, a really good show today. We have Chad Green, the uh, uh, Chad Deer Hunter Green, showing the, the ORD sheet indexing and the ORD printing. So, Chad, are you ready? I'm going to make you presenter. Let me stop sharing. Oh, <clears throat> Chad's not here. Chad is here. Let's see. Make presenter. Getting ready to go. I'm ready to go hunting, so don't <laughs> that short and sweet. You got to wait. Share my screen here. Screen. Um, not yet. Share. All right, can you see it now? Yes, looks good. Well, it's coming. There it is. All right, good to go? Yes. Right. Okay. What I'm going to talk about today is three different things. First thing is auto turn. And we'll talk about sheet indexing in ORD, how it can be utilized if you wish to utilize it. And then we're going to talk about printing or plotting in ORD also. So we'll kind of go over those three different topics. The first thing is auto turn. We have a new version of auto turn out there now. It's auto turn 11. So those individuals that have auto turn 10, you're fine to run with it until December the 17th of this year. After that, the license for that will no longer allow it to run. So for those individuals that have auto turn 10 right now and you want the auto turn 11 installed, just simply give myself or Chris Schreiner or Shannon Smith an email and we will install the, the new auto turn 11 on your machine. Now, if in the very near future, you know, within a month now, if you think you're gonna be getting a new laptop or a new computer, you can just hold off until you get your new computer and then we can install it on your new PC. So I just wanna let everybody know about that on the auto turn side of it, if you do have it installed. And of course, if you got any questions about that, feel free to send us an email and we'll explain a little bit more with it. Now, going back to ORD, 
we're going to talk about the sheet index and how it can be utilized if you wish to to use it. Um, with the sheet index, there's a few different things that it can be used for. The first thing is you can actually put in the sheets that you've cut for your plan sheets inside of the sheet index, which is this little area right here. And you can kind of tell right now that I've added a few sheets inside of here. And I've talked about this in a previous WebEx and Bill has also, but whenever you cut your sheets in ORD, you're gonna be utilizing the name boundary tool. And in that name boundary tool, it's gonna create a drawing model and a sheet model for you for whichever sheet that you're trying to create. So if I go back up to my models and I go back to this right here, which would be my sheet model for this particular typical, typical section that I have, And you'll see that it has the border in there and basically anything that reflects from either the drawing model or the default model gets reflected in your sheet model, which will be your, your, your final sheet, basically. Go back to here. Go back to the sheet index. Whenever you add sheets inside the sheet index, you can add as many sheets as you wish. And one good thing about the sheet index is once you have them inside of here, you can easily navigate to another file. So that may be one benefit of utilizing the sheet index. So let's say you have all your, you know, your typical sections or your plan sheets, like what I have here, tip, um, cross sections. You can simply add those to the sheet index. And if you want to navigate to one of those sheets, you just double click on that particular sheet and it will navigate you into that file that that sheet resides in. So it makes easy navigation for that. That's kind of one benefit that could be utilized with the sheet index. Another one is, and I think it'd be a little bit more beneficial, is how it can fill out the title block information for you right inside of here. And that's kind of the reason, one of the main reasons why we have it set up. It's kind of like a title block integration where it automatically numbers your sheets and it puts in the route, district, job number, whichever fields that you want to have filled out for you. And that's what I'm going to show you here in a little bit. And then another thing that you can use the sheet indexing for is the printing, which I'll kind of come back to here a little bit later on. So let me go ahead and do a fit view on this. And in the sheet index, what I need to do first, you'll have some icons up here at the top. And I'm going to select this one that says open sheet index for edit. That way I can modify my sheet index. Now there's a few different ways that I can add sheets to my sheet index. If I'm in a file, I could come into my models and I could simply select the sheet that I have, whether there's one or 20 or whatever that's inside of here, and I can just do a simple drag and drop. That's one way that I could do it. Or another way that I can do it is I have the option here to add sheet. So if I select that, here's where I would go in through here. Excuse me. Find the file that I, or excuse me, find the sheet that I want to add, and I can add those that way. So let's say I want to add this one. I'll add these three. And I'll add them to the list, and I'll come through here. And let's let's say I want to do the the quantity sheets also. So I'll select that one, and I'll hit Add on that. And then whenever I select OK. It'll go through here and it'll show me the file that that particular sheet resides in and then it'll tell me how many different sheet models that are inside there. Then inside of here is where I determine which ones do I want to add. So I'll just go through here and select. These through here. Now we'll go ahead and click on OK. And hopefully eventually I'll go ahead and check those in. And you'll see that those got added to my sheet index. Now, right now they're not in the proper order. I could simply go through here and reorder these very easily. You know, I come through here and select this one. Actually, I can probably go ahead and select all these through here. Let's say I want to put those in a different order. Maybe I want to put those right underneath the title sheet. Simply select those, and I can just simply do a drag and drop. You'll see that blue line through there.
And of course it repositioned those sheets. So I can reorder those by simply doing a drag and drop and, and getting those lined up exactly the way I want. Okay. Now there's some other things that we're gonna go through here and talk about how to modify some of these sheet numbers, which that's gonna reflect over here at the side where it says ain't updated yet. If you ever modify some of this stuff through here, you may have to right click over it and do an update sheet models. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it'll go through there and update those accordingly. Whatever decides to get done. I can't do anything until it finalizes it. And of course, this is all live, so it could very well crash on me, but which it did. That's nice. Hey, Chad, these are just the sheet models, right? No drawing. Yes, these are just the sheet models. Okay, let me go ahead and let's go back into tools, local document organizer. Go ahead and check, check those in. And let that open back up. It should be back here in just a second. Of course, this is still in kind of development, but come on. Chad, this is the idea I had for you stretching it out at all. I know. It wasn't supposed to crash, but it's all live, so. Okay. So now it's back up and running. All right. So if I go back to the the sheet index, of course, it's, it's updated now. It did crash, of course. But another thing that I can do inside of here is, like, like I said before, I was going to go through there and modify the, the route, the district, the job number, and stuff like that. So after I came through here and tried to use the edit, there's an option right here that says Manage Sheet Index. And whenever you can come in here and select that, we have some different fields that we've created. You got the tab for the index, one for the folder, and one for the sheet. The only one that you need to modify is this one that says index. And then inside of here, by default, they'll have an X for all these different fields. Well, <clears throat> if you wanna put in your bridge number, your contract ID, whatever fields that you need filled out for the project, you just go ahead and fill those out. So I'll just type in a few different things here. I'm not gonna worry about that. No, it's not correct but you get the idea of what's going on and <laughs> chad does case matter or can you do lowercase case does over? not case does not matter it can be lowercase or uppercase because i have it set to where it automatically go uppercase for everything so you can type it in however you wish but it will just automatically be uppercase that's the way we've done that in the past and that's the way we we put in for our our lettering and so forth so basically, once I have that filled out, I'll just go ahead and click on OK. And I'll try to do the sh update sheet models again. Let's see what happens here. Hopefully it doesn't crash, but. Let's 
I think it has to go through and check out all of those because we've modified each one of those different fields through there. And you see right here, it automatically put in those fields for each one of those. And if I go to any one of these other ones, it would do the same thing. You, these would automatically be filled out for you. And also the sheet number, which this is the sheet that we're in right now. It's sheet number two, and that's automatically filled out for you. So basically this number right through here would be the sheet number for it. Hey, uh, Chad, this is Steve. I got a Go question ahead. about your the sheet numbers. I mean, this, this index looks great and all, but most of all of our typical sheets should be sheet number two and all of our quantities should be sheet number three. You are correct. I mean, okay. Assuming that, now we, there's a way of fixing that or. Yes, there is. And that's what I'm going to show next. Brought up, you brought up a good point there. It's kind of the same thunder, Steve. It's kind of the same. It's kind of the same way for like the cross sections through here. Cause normally it's not going to be all the way through here. You go one through. You know, 200 or however many sheets, the cross sections start back at, you know, one through whatever, depending on which route it is or however you do your cross sections. So let me go through the cross section portion of it first, and then I'll come back to like sheet number two for your typical sections and sheet number, or excuse me, sheet number three for your quantities. That sound good, Steve? You betcha. Okay. So, for like your cross sections, what I'm probably going to suggest is to come through here and actually create a folder for those. And you can create a folder for these other ones too, but what I would do is go ahead and create a folder just for your cross sections. So to do that, I'll just click on this top option right here for design. And I'll do create folder. And of course you can name it whatever you need to. And then once I have that folder created, I can come through here and select those sheets and I can just simply do a drag and drop. And now if you look underneath that particular folder for cross sections, you see your cross sections will automatically be renumbered one through our main sheets that you have. So if I would navigate into one of those, it would be sheet number one or sheet number two or sheet number three and so forth. So that's kind of how that would be set up for cross sections. And you could do the same thing for your plan sheets. You could, you could create a separate folder for your plan sheets. I'm not going to worry about that for this example, but hopefully you get the idea. Okay. Now, going back to Steve's thing, for typical sections, normally they're always sheet number two. Quantity sheets are always sheet number three. How do I get around that? Well, one way to kind of get around that, there's two different ways you could do it, is I would go through here and leave the first one up here as is. That way the sheet numbering stays the way it should. But on these other ones, I would go down through here and I just have two of those. I could select those and I could either go to the explore, excuse me, go to properties, and inside of here, underneath where it says model link, you have the option for the general. And you <clears throat> screw it right through here. You can exclude it from the auto numbering and auto sequence or sequence number. So I'll go through here and actually turn those to on. That way it removes it from the sheet numbering and the sequence number. Now, if I go back, you'll see inside of here that this is sheet number one, sheet number two. These two are excluded, but then it goes to number three for your quantities. And then I can do the same thing for these two right here. I can go to properties, or you can right click over, over it and go to details. And this actually gives you the details for it. And this is another way you, where you could turn those to on. It takes a little bit more time to do that, but you got two different options through there. And now if I go back to the Explorer, you can see that those are excluded now. 
So you got one, two, these would all be number two, number three, these would all be number three, and then of course your plain sheets on down would be four through whatever. Now once you've excluded those additional sheets for your typical sections and your, your quantities, this is one way that you could do it is you could come through here and edit your sheet number in your details. And there's there's a good thing about it and there's a bad thing about it or drawback. Let me go ahead and open up this right here. Of course, you double click on it. It should navigate you into that file. It's going to prompt you to save this DGNWS file. You want to check that in. That's, that's important. And I'll kind of come back to that here in a second. I'll go ahead and check these other ones in. Basically, that DGNWS file that will automatically get gets created, that is all the information that gets stored for your sheet index. So you don't really want to delete that file out. Okay. It's updated. All right. Now, coming back to that, these quantity sheets are all contained in inside the same file. There's just three inside of here. So, if I go to this file right here, well, I actually go to this sheet, sorry. This one right here is the one that we're in, which is number one. That's number one. If I go to the actual sheet number two, you're going to see that this name of this area right here from a sheet number looks, you know, quantities of, excuse, excuse me, summary of quantities, sheet number two. Because these right here are what they call text fields. So it's basically looking at what's ever inside of my sheet index field to fill out that information. So, one way that I could easily renumber these is I could come in here and simply remove that text field by simply just double clicking on this and then type it in number three, which totally removes that text field and I could accept it. And now I got sheet number three inside of here. So this is no longer a text field, it's just normal microstation text but inside of, inside of your sheet index, it still kind of gives you a good end of indication of what sheet it is, which would be sheet number two, and then also sheet number three. Or option number two is I could come in here and actually change it in my details. So if I go to sheet number three, and I go to the details of it, I can scroll through here. There's an option or a field that says sheet number. I could go through there and select that and then type in number three. Hit enter to accept it. But now if I go back into my sheet index, this sheet number right here, it is still a text field. But inside of your sheet index, it's just going to be number three. So. Kind of two different ways you could do it, depending on which situation that you want. I kind of prefer this method more than what this is, but it kind of gives you two different options on that. So, but that's how you'd go through there and possibly renumber those to always be, you know, sheet number two or all sheet number three for your typical sections and your quantities. Another thing that you kind of have to keep in mind for the, the sheet index is the name of your sheet is what's going to be named in the sheet index. It's not the file name. It's going to be whatever you name your sheet. So whenever you're going through there and using the name boundary tool to lay out your sheets and cut those, the name of your sheet is kind of, kind of keep that in mind because that will be the name of it whenever you pull it in your sheet index if you want to utilize it. All right.
other than that, on the sheet index, that's pretty much about, about it, okay? We'll talk about the printing portion of it here in a little bit, but that's pretty much it on the sheet indexing and what we'll use it for if you do wish to utilize it. Like I said, it's easy to navigate in between files. I can double click on one of these. It's going to navigate me into that file. Or another thing that you can utilize it for is the your title block in integration portion of it, where it automatically numbers your sheets. It puts in the county, job number, and everything like that. If you want to still do it the old-fashioned way where you go through there and go to every single DGN file and go to those sheets and double-click on that and manually do it, I guess you can still do that also. That is an option. But once you get this kind of set up and done, which it doesn't take too long, it'll automatically, re automatically number those sheets, and it does it pretty well. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions on the sheet indexing portion of it? Okay. The next topic that I will talk about is printing. Now, in ORD, with the printing, our direction is to go through there and just make PDF plots of your sheets that you need to have printed. That's the direction that we're going to go. And there's a few reasons why we're going to go with the, with the PDF plotting is number one, it kind of eliminates the constant maintenance of multiple print drivers and multiple printers in, lo in different locations throughout the state. It's kind of hard to keep those maintained whenever IS does certain thing on certain, um, excuse me, unexpected changes that they have and so forth. So we're kind of going in the direction of just doing PDF plots and then you can store them wherever you need to. Also, you have the mobility of those PDFs and you, you've probably seen that as you've made PDFs in the past where you can print those PDFs to any location. You can send those PDFs to whoever you need to through an email and so forth. Another thing that we have is we have additional flexibility on how those PDFs get created. So that's another benefit with, with the PDF portion of it. And then also we don't really have a developer in IS to customize printing like we did in the past, which we haven't had one in a long time. And, you, and you've kind of probably seen that in, on, on the SS10 side where our, we have our customized printing but there's certain things in there that we can't remove, okay? So we don't really have a, like I said, we don't have a developer in IS that can customize that and modify that. So we're kind of using more of the MicroStation tools, or excuse me, the ORD tools for printing. And like I said, they will be PDF plots. Now there's gonna be two different ways you, we can do it. Um, one way is we can go through the create renditions and create plots that way. That's gonna be one way. Another way is you can do it through ORD, and that's what I'll kind of show right now. All right. So to get to the printing, we just have this icon up here at the top that says print, and I'll just use this example right here for right now, and we'll come back to the actual sheet index also. So if I go to print, it's gonna prompt this right here, and by default, it's automatically gonna, going to go to this MoDOT PDF sheet. And it's set to a B size. If, so if you're just doing a normal B size print, which that's what most people normally do, it's automatically going to default to this. And then the user can come in here and just simply click on print to file. I'll do no wizard on that. Figure out where you want to send it to. And I will just send it to the... See, it's quantities. I'll just send to the quantities folder. Now I'll go ahead and click on save. And you'll see right there that it printed that file right there, that PDF. So if I click on it, you'll see that it printed out that, that file. Okay, pretty simple on that. Let me go ahead and check this one back in. 
which I just freed. We haven't done anything with it. Move it for the time being. Okay. So that's one thing about it. And you can change these parameters as you need to. You know, if you want to do color, you could come in here and you could change that to color if you need to and so forth. But if you're just doing a normal B size print, whenever you click on the print, it's automatically going to set it to those defaults. Okay. Now, let's say you got a fence that you want to print. Let's go to through there, show an example of that. And I will just put a fence around that area. And I can either do it through this file, or excuse me, I can do it through the sheet, or I could possibly go back to my default model and I could probably do the same thing. So if I have a fence out there, I could go back up to the print. And this time, I will change my option right here from Modot PDF sheet. I will change that to fence. Now you'll see that it changed my parameters down below here accordingly. And I can change this as needed. I can go to a B size if I wanted to. If I do that, I may have to go back up and click my maximize. That way it gets my full parameter of the fence that I have defined. You also have your long plots. And for those of you that print out strip maps, maybe to the OSE plotters, that's what you'd use for that situation there, where you may have to put in that cell inside of your de or default model around your project limits. And then you could come through here and actually select one of those plots, whichever size that you created for that cell, or excuse me, whichever cell that you selected whenever you place that long plot you would select that particular option and then it would print out accordingly. Of course, it sends us to, to a PDF file and then you can print that PDF file as is. So we have different options for that, either by the sheet or if you're going to do it by fence. And cancel out of that. Another example that we have, so that's a couple of different options for that. Let's see here. Should I go back to one of my sheets? Another option that you can utilize is the actual sheet index. And inside of there, there's an option that says open print organizer. And inside the print organizer, the first box that will pop up is which style that you want to print, either by fence or by sheet. Normally, if you're going to print this out, you're, you're going to do it by the sheet. We're going to do multiple plots on this example here. So I'll just go ahead and select the one that says sheet because I don't have a fence defined anyway. And then once you have that, you'll see all the sheets that you have inside of here. Then if it's cross sections or the sheets that you have underneath the design. Now I could easily go through here and determine which ones that I want to print out by simply just selecting those, or I could select all of them. It, it, it doesn't matter. But let's say I go through here and I select, select these right here, and I want to print those out. One way is I can go up to the print, that would bring it up, or I could right click over it and do the print that way. After that's up, then you determine how you want to print it. Do you want to print out in a single job print? Or do you want to print them out as separate job prints? Well, if you want them all combined together, you could do a single job print and determine where you want to send it to, which by default it says design PDF. And we'll leave that as is right now. We're still kind of I'm still kind of looking at that to figure out how I want that to be set up. But it's going to put it underneath the design folder and name it design PDF. So all these will be combined into one PDF. So I click on OK. This will go through here. And it takes takes a little bit of time, but it's not too bad. It'll go through there and find each one of those sheets and combine those into one PDF file 
and it says design PDF. And once it's done, it should be stored underneath the design folder, which you can see right now it's being checked out. So it is creating it right now. Hopefully, chat is a question in uh, the chat. I don't have the chat up op open. Is right Descartes now. plotting for the OSE going away? I haven't looked at it yet. I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure on that yet. I'm assuming we'll probably use the the printing through like what I showed earlier to replace the Descartes plotting, but I haven't printed out or I haven't tested out 100 percent on that yet. Hey, Chad, this is Chris. Go ahead. Um, we will uh, we will use the out of the box plotting. The Descartes plotting will be gone. Okay. We'll include uh, drivers that kind of have that deal with the raster images. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Okay, so once that's done, you'll see that that PDF is there. I can double click on it to open it up, just like anything else. Now you'll see that I have that PDF and those all combined into one separate PDF file. So you may find a use for that. You may, let's say you're wanting to print out just a bunch of plan sheets to send to somebody. You can create those into one PDF bundle right there and send that one PDF to that person. Let me go ahead and check this one in. So that's an option for that. You can also go through here and do the print. And you can print those out into sync separate job prints. You can determine where you want to send it to. You could use the source location directory for the print destination. So if you check that on, of course, that gets ghosted out. Another thing that we have right here, kind of looking at that a little bit more, but is, <clears throat> excuse me, how do you want to print out the actual file name? By default right now, it's doing the print definition name. So if I hit on the preview, The actual print definition name is going to be this right here. So that's the name of the file of the PDF that would get created. Well, there's some other options underneath there. And you could change it to whichever expression name that you want. So let's say instead of it being print definition name, let's say I want it to be the, the sequence source file name. So I'd select that particular expression name. And I can do the preview for it. And now you'll see that the actual output of the file name is going to be 001 dash this typical section, number two, number three, number four, and so forth. So let me just go ahead and click on that. And I'll click on OK to that. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and print them again. So it'll go through there and it'll print out all those into separate PDF files with that name that I just showed you. And there's, like I said, there's a bunch of different options underneath there. So you can kind of look at that at your own leisure. Whenever you do get it, we may kind of comb through some of that and kind of clean some of that up to maybe name it the way we want to, but we're kind of at the beginning stage of, of kind of looking at that portion of it. The other thing that I was going to show here in a little bit is if you look right in here where I'm hovering over, this is the design.p set. And that's basically just a print set of the, um, the prints that you're doing. So if you went through here and did some of this and you wanna save that where you change some of your options and so forth, you could actually save that out as a print set. And later on, you could actually open up that print set file and it would automatically print that out accordingly for me. Maybe you did a print set for your, your typical sections where you just print all those out or your um, cross sections, stuff like that. You could actually create those and save those out as separate print sets if you wish to utilize that. I haven't used it much yet, but that is an option. Okay. 
So let me go ahead and close that down. I'm gonna say no to my save my changes. And then if I go back to my, back into project wise, I should be able to go to my typical sections and you can see those are printed out and the same thing for my quantities, which are those right through there. All right. Okay. Other than that, that's pretty much all I was going to show for this WebEx. Does anybody have any other questions on it? Is there anything in the chat window, Bill? You got it all, man. Okay. So, like I said, the sheet indexing, we're going to kind of leave that as being optional for right now, but I think there's some benefits of utilizing it. And then, of course, the printing portion of it, um, we're still trying to get that all ironed out, which we're getting we're getting close to that. But um, that's kind of the direction that we're going on the the printing portion of it is sending it to a P, making it a PDF file, and then you can send it to whichever printer that you want. Hey Chad, I got a question for you. Sure. Does the uh, sheet indexing also create like a summary sheet of all, uh, like a directory or an index? Uh, yes, it does. You, I haven't looked at it too much yet, but there is an, this option right here that says, I think it creates a table. That's fine. I, I was just kind of curious because I thought I saw a, a video on that. Yeah, it does, but I haven't, I haven't looked at it too much yet. So okay. I can place it out there and it does create a, an index like what we have right through here. Yeah. And that may be something that we could look at down the road figure yeah. out if we want to utilize that or not, but yeah, it does. Okay. And it, it may go through there. There may be some other options where you can, it just says from report, that's the only option there. Yeah, like I said, I haven't, hey. looked, at, I haven't looked at that much on that portion of it, so. Hey Chad, kind of this is news. Jeff. Yeah. In Central District. Yes. Um, since we're going to a PDF direction, um, have you all noticed, uh, you know, our, our, how our plot is, our plotting features or our setup is uh, basically geared toward our physical printers? But I've, I've noticed how, uh, you know, some Adobe uh, plots that I plot out just kind of modify those line weights or maybe even shading types uh, to basically, uh, you know, basically the line weights turn out to be the same no matter how how thick it is, how thick I put it our basically our standard line weights just seem to be the same in our PDF printouts or plot outs versus maybe a physical actual physical print and I don't know if uh, you guys notice that or maybe I'm just imagining it I I don't know but uh, but uh, are we uh, going to redo or or maybe modify our plot setups to maybe uh, uh, be more compatible with Adobe PDF. That'd be something we can look at, but I haven't, I haven't heard of anybody else saying anything about about that portion of it. But like I said, me and Chris, we can kind of look at it, you know, before we start rolling it out, and we can kind of go from there. Okay. But, sometimes, sometimes when I, you know, uh, put in like shaded regions as well, um, I try to, uh, you know, I. Uh, I'll, I'll differentiate it by uh, making it uh, lighter or darker, whatever's needed. And uh, a lot of times the Adobe... What, what do you mean by lighter or darker? Just changing the, the weight of it? Just changing the weight of it, yeah. And uh, sometimes, uh, well, I think a lot of times Adobe just doesn't pick up on that. And, uh, uh, this is Chris. There's actually a setting in, in Adobe that that yeah. does that, messes with that line, the line weights. No okay. cap. Um, I'll have to find it and I'll show you where it's, a, it's I think it's only the general setting of uh, Adobe. Um, okay. But yeah, we, okay. The, the goal is not, the goal is to maintain uh, the line weights as they are right now. Like if you actually were right. to, to the OSE or to the, the Canon. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'll see if I can find it. I, I have blue beam. Uh, so I'm going to have to take a look at what it is in Adobe. Um, but so. Okay. I'll take a closer look and I'll let you know. All right. Thank you.
Any other questions? Thank you, Chad. All right, sounds good. That was good, man. Stop sharing. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate your input on that. You're welcome, Bill. <laughs> okay, get back to my little PowerPoint here. Next month's scheduled presenter is Randall Sunshine Hoskins. He's, uh, I don't know what he's gonna present on, but he will have the December 21st um, presentation. So we'll, we'll come up with that. Again, as usual, uh, you got any questions, emails, uh, you can contact, contact us many different ways through here. Um, if you guys got any ideas what you want to see or hear about, uh, send me an email. I'll try to get it scheduled. I think the presenter after Randall in January will be myself, so we'll be coming up with some some kind of ORD something. But that's all we got for this month. If you guys got don't have any other questions, anybody anything at all? all right. We'll see you next month, December twenty first. Have a good one.